Let's go back to our design and take a look at what's next. So we're at another tricky element, which are radio buttons. Now radio buttons are similar to checkboxes, except the idea with radio buttons is that only one would ever be checked. Now it could be that these are just stylized checkboxes, but it seems like these are mutually exclusive options. So we'll go for the idea of radio buttons. Now we saw the structure of radio buttons earlier. Let's refresh our memories though. Let's open up this example here. So we have two radios, and so we're gonna use input type equals radio. We'll give it a name and a value, and then we can put whatever text we want after that. Now this example is a little bit incomplete because in general, you'll want to make the text that is associated with an input a label element instead. So to get an example of how to use the radio style input with a label, let's do a search for HTML label, and we'll jump to the W3Schools page. So here's an example. So you have an input, you give it a type of radio, you give it a name, and then you give it a unique identifier with the ID attribute. Now we haven't talked about ID attributes before, but they just do what that implies. They give a unique identifier to an element, and you can add an ID to virtually any HTML element. Now throughout this series, we haven't used IDs at all, but when you work with a framework or a CMS, like Drupal for example, you may find yourself using IDs as selectors in your CSS on occasion. Most of the time that's not the best idea if you can avoid it because IDs are supposed to be unique for each element. That means that they can't be reused anywhere, which makes them fragile and also not very flexible. But for this case, we need a unique identifier in order to tie the label to the input. And the way we do that is by creating a label and then using the for attribute and using the for attribute and using the value there that's the same as the ID for the input that we want to affect. So let's try this. And what this means is that when we click the label, it will actually affect the input itself. Now this effect of being able to click a label in order to affect the input is exactly what we need in order to style our radio buttons with a custom icon. 